Hey, welcome back to the Empowered and Inspired Women in History show. I'm Carrie Beauvais, author of the Annie Oakley Mystery Series and the Grace Michelle Mystery Series. In celebration of my newest novel, Grace in the Wings, which will be released September 19th, I'm highlighting the famous Sigfield Follies and many of its stars, particularly the showgirls that made the Follies such a huge success, and many who are in my upcoming releases. So if you want to know more about the famous Sigfield girls, subscribe to my YouTube channel below. Be sure to click on the bell so that you'll be alerted every time I post one of these informative and fun-filled videos. Today, I'm going to be talking about the comedian Fanny Bryce, who does play a role in Grace in the Wings. The lovable and hysterical Fanny serves as a mentor and confidant to Grace, and she helps her to view life with a little more fun and a little less seriousness. I hope I did her justice. You might have become familiar with Fanny Bryce from two movies about her starring the amazingly talented Barbara Streisand. The first movie was titled Funny Girl, which came out in 1968, and the second one was titled Funny Lady, and that came out in 1975. I saw Funny Girl on television at about the time the second movie came out, because I was still quite young in 1968. No, really, I was. But I remember my mother taking me to see Funny Lady at the theater when I was 12 or 13. In both movies, the dreamy Omar Sharif plays her first husband, the cad Nick Arnstein. I fell a little in love with the Egyptian actor and he became my first on-screen boyfriend. There have been many since, but Omar was the first. Fanny Bryce was born Fania Borak in 1891 to Jewish immigrants who had settled on New York's Lower East Side. Her parents bought a saloon and her mother managed it while her father squandered everything they made. Fed up with her husband, Fanny's mother, Rose Stern, took her brood of four children and headed to Brooklyn in 1902. Fanny didn't much like school and was often in trouble for ditching class. She wanted to spend her time in the neighborhood amateur night contests and that desire led her to perform in several musical comedies. At 14 years old, she made her stage debut during Amateur Night at Keeney's Theater in Brooklyn. Encouraged by her success at Keeney's, she was determined to become a professional performer. She auditioned for a show called The Talk of New York and was delighted when she was cast as a chorus girl. But because of inexperience, she was fired before the musical's opening in December. But Bryce refused to abandon her dream. She turned to burlesque, the least selective branch of the entertainment business. She performed in the transatlantic burlesquers in 1907 and 1908, and then joined the cast of The Girls from Happy Land for the 1908 and 1909 season. Although the show was poorly received, it was a landmark in her career because it marked her first appearance as Fanny Bryce, the name she used for the rest of her life. Around 1909, she had her first big role. She played a character named Josie McFadden in a production called The College Girls. She nailed the part with a song called Sadie Salome Go Home. It was the first song she performed with a Yiddish accent. Ethnic comedy was extremely, extremely popular then and the audiences found her hysterical. She had found her performance style and it quickly became her shtick to use a Yiddish word. My friend Elise would be so proud. In 1910, Florence Ziegfeld went to one of her shows and was blown away by her performance. As I may have mentioned before, the great Ziegfeld had a gift for spotting sheer talent and star potential. After the show, he approached Fanny backstage and said he wanted to put her under contract for his follies. Fanny agreed and thus began her long association with the popular entertainment icon. She performed in seven Follies between 1910 and 1923 and in several Midnight Frolic editions from 1915 to 1921. In the 21 Follies, she was featured singing My Man. The song lyrics strangely resembled the summation of her life with Arnstein and the song was wildly popular. It became her signature hit. But Bryce actually became most famous for her character Baby Snooks, which she pronounced Schnooks. She performed as Baby in the 1934 Follies, dressed in a starched white pinafore, ankle socks, Mary Janes, and a hair ribbon. In 1937, Fanny and Schnooks hit the airwaves in radio at CBS. The Baby Schnooks show was featured weekly until 1948. 
Bryce was so invested in Snooks, she would often do her radio performances in costume even though her audience couldn't see her. Completely devoted to the character, she told biographer Norman Katov, Snooks is just the kid I used to be. She's my kind of youngster, the type I like. She has imagination, she's eager, she's alive. With all her deviltry, she is still a good kid, never vicious or mean. I love Schnooks, and when I play her, I do it as seriously as if she were real. I am Schnooks. For 20 minutes or so, Fanny Bryce ceases to exist. Bryce's career was full of ups and downs, as was her, her personal life. She was married three times, and never happily. In her teens, she married a man by the name of Frank White, and the marriage lasted less than six years. Then she met her second husband, Nikki Arnstein, whom she considered the love of her life. But dashing and charming as he was, but not nearly as handsome as Omar Sharif, in my humble opinion, Nikki Arnstein was a ladies' man, a professional gambler, and a criminal. Operating under several aliases, Arnstein wasn't very good at much, not even good at being a criminal. He ended up serving 14 months in Sing Sing for wiretapping. Fanny, still blinded by stars in her eyes, visited him in prison every week. In 1918, they finally got hitched after living together for six years. They had two beautiful children, but life was far from idyllic. In 1924, Arnstein was charged in Wall Street bond theft was convicted and was sentenced to Leavenworth Federal Prison where he served three years. Upon his release, he never returned to Fanny and their two children, the scoundrel. She divorced him and then married her third husband, Billy Rose, a songwriter and stage producer. Fanny thought she'd finally found happiness at last and she and Billy, as she and Billy had show business in common. She starred in several of his shows and the two operated almost as business partners. But in the end, this third marriage ended in divorce too. Fanny became a single mother and had to work hard to keep food on the table. Baby Schnooks saved the day and she continued with her radio show. The pressure of being a single working mom took a toll and Bryce suffered a heart attack in the summer of 1945. But by the fall of that same year, she was able to resume work. She continued with radio and with schnooks until 1951 when she suffered a stroke. She died five days later at the age of 59. Fanny's career was long and varied. She worked as a song model, comedian, singer, theater and movie actress. She starred in many films, two in which she plays herself, The Great Ziegfeld in 1934 and The Ziegfeld Follies in 1936. Fanny also recorded several songs for Victor Records and Columbia Records, and after her death, she posthumously received a Grammy Hall of Fame award for her 1921 recording of My Man. So that's all I have for you today. For more Zigfield fun, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel below. Just click on my logo in the bottom right-hand corner and the subscribe button will pop up. I'll see you next time when I'll be talking about Zigfield girl Olive Thomas, the inspiration for one of the characters in Grace in the Wings. See you then.